promise that I'll um, start uploading more of my channel because I uploaded a video probably about two months ago. Just, you know, just give me all a rundown on a lot of questions and, you know, a little bit of information on the hair business. And I had uploaded a YouTube, not YouTube, but a Snapchat video of me making a wig and it kind of went crazy on my Snapchat. And I just be getting a lot of people when you make another video, can you upload the video on YouTube, can you do this, can you do this. So today I'm going to just, you know, give y'all a small YouTube video on how to make a closure week. this is a four by four closure but my collection is already plucked down the middle it's already plucked in the front like a frontal and it's ready to go on the wig and start the process so I'm gonna just slap this on here and I ain't like I, I'm, I'm gonna get straight to the point y'all like a lot of stuff I just use you know I don't use like T-pins and all of that, but today I just kind of like use one because I guess, let me just scoop this up. Y'all want to see exactly what's going on? So I'm going to scoop this up and I'm going to, hopefully y'all can see. So I'm going to take the front of the closure, take the front of this closure, and I'm going to place this smack dead in the middle of this. It kind of don't matter because once I put the wig on and cut, you know, from the middle, it won't even matter. But I'm going to just try to place it to where I can guide it. So I'm going to take a T-pin. I'm going to take a T-pin. And punch a hole in the closure right here. And I'm going to sew the closure. I'm going to sew the closure down. Like, see, that's why I do it because if you give me too many problems and I just know I'm just slapping, I'm gonna do it in the back. So, I'm gonna take this thread, a C curve thread, I mean, C curve needle, and I'm gonna thread this side, I'm gonna thread the two top sides down. person they like to talk a lot I'm just really a visual learner like I can I never I don't think I ever be able to you know learn nothing from somebody talking if you want to say I just like to see down I'm threading this part down I'm threading this part down and then I'm gonna go to the other side all about her I really don't I honestly don't because I don't want to be a hairstylist I don't want to you know make wigs and stuff as a living but you know I guess it's just some fun to upload that my viewers will want to see but I, I don't I tell people all the time I do her just because I know how doing her for a living I, 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 don't, I never want to do her for a living I did her back you know some time ago it was just this money, so why not? So, why not? So, I'm just locking this down, and as you can see, I'm sewing on this part right here, I'm locking it down. So I can kind of like go back and forth to make it stretch further so the wig won't be fat sitting on the head because this not what you want. You don't want the wig to sit on your head fat at all. So you kind of want to like pull each side down.
And I'm going to sew these sides down. A lot of people use T-pins and stuff to guide them, but, you know, it just, I feel like in a, in a, it's a mind thing. You know what to do. You know what to do, so I'll just come back after I get done. Well, you know, I'm going to come back once I get to showing the back side of the clothing. So, y'all see... Everything is sewn around. Do y'all see like the back of this closure? Let me push this down. Do y'all see the back of this how I pulled this up? I haven't sewed it down yet because I want to show y'all. A lot of people have problems or be inboxing me about how to get the closure to lay flat. They closure just will not lay flat. And I promise y'all, I had the same problem when I first started making wigs. I could not get my, like I was sewed all together, but I could not get my, my closure to lay flat. So what I learned was, as you sewing the closure on, especially when you get to the back of it, you should pull the closure back. Pulling the closure back not only helps with the room, but it makes it flat. Flat as possible. And once you're sewing, it shouldn't be a hump. You shouldn't see a hump like this. You shouldn't see a hump like this at all. As you're sewing, you're supposed to pull it wider to make everything lay flat. And once you pull it wider and pull it back, it's supposed to all lay flat. So as you sewing, and get closer to the thing, it's supposed to just lay flat like this. Once you get done sewing, everything is supposed to lay flat. I'm going to finish sewing this together. Because once I get done sewing this together, I promise y'all, this is going to lay flat. It's going to all lay flat just like this. It shouldn't be no hump. You shouldn't try to get a hump out of it or nothing. If you sewing it right, it should literally be just smooth. Like just, just sewing it around. So I'm going to finish this finish this part and I'm gonna come back and show y'all how I sew my bundles in. So I'll be back. Y'all see exactly how it's sewn down and how flat it is? This is what you need. This is what you want to have when it comes to sewing the closure down. This is exactly what you need because if not, this shit is going to stick up and it's going to be fat. And you're gonna be very disappointed and wanted to take the wig off or even take it down. So this is what you need right here, what it's look like. I'ma go ahead and start. The closure to look like. So I'ma be working with four bundles and a closure, 228s and 226s. Peruvian straight from my hair collection and to start this off you want to stick this I'm I'm doubling the wheels too I don't really believe in singling width unless I get to the you know either the, if I'm sewing four bundles I do I single the top two bundles and I'm doing three bundles I single the top I mean the top the top bundle basically so take this take the needle the hair's doubled, so it should be like a little crease right here between the two tracks. A little crease right here. And you're going to stick this. Stick it through there. And you're going to take the bottom of the wig cap. And you're going to, don't stick it through the band part. You should, you, you will know if you're sticking it through the band part because it's going to feel kind of like tough to put it through. But you're sticking it. You're gonna stick it through this little part right here. The first, you're gonna stick it through the first layer of the cap. Like I said, you'll be able to feel if you're sticking it through the band part because it's gonna feel kind of like kind of like rough to get it in. But stick it through the first layer. Because if you if you don't stick it through the first layer, then you're gonna have problems. When you put the wig on, it's gonna be a problem when you put the wig on. It's gonna feel tight, it ain't gonna feel like it wanna stretch. It's just gonna be really with a big ass waste of time. So stick that through there. And keep it right there. You're gonna stick it through there at the same time because you wanna double it. Not double it, but you wanna knot it. So you're gonna stick it through there the second time. And you're gonna take the rest of the thread and wrap once, twice. And pull it through. And this should lock that in right there. See? 
this shit locked it in right there. And you gonna keep. I honestly, some people uh double knot as they go, but I honestly feel like this a waste of time. And if you knot it right, if you right knot it right and tight good like this, you shouldn't have problems with it. And I don't stick the thread. I don't stick the thread and the needle through this because this is a part of the cap stretching. These two parts are a part of the scrap, the, the cap stretching. So try not to stick it through there. I kind of try to like skip over it like this, and I just skip over it so it'll give you room to stretch. But I kind of just keep going. Yeah, making wigs can be the easiest thing or it can be the hardest thing. I always knew how to make a wig, but when I first started making wigs, it was like kind of, it was really hard for me because first, I knew how to do the closure, but like I said, I was having problems with getting it flat, and I didn't know exactly what, I didn't know exactly what wig to use. I will put, uh, at the end of the thing, at the end of the video, I'm going to put the needles, the thread, and what kind of caps I personally use. I don't use all caps because... I don't use mesh caps. I just feel like mesh caps, number one, I just feel like they rip a lot. Number two, I don't feel like they have more stretch than what dome caps have. I don't feel like they're more secure. Anybody that I know with a, with a, you know, a mesh cap, they always complain about the weak slime back. They always complain about, you know, it just, I feel like personally it's a lot of complaints. Maybe it may work for other people's heads. People have smaller heads, people have bigger heads. I just feel like, you know, it's not the best, the best fit for me to use, so I use these, and I show you. Actually, I can show you now what caps I use. If you're in Memphis, you can get it from CMP next to AutoZone or Hickory Hill. I don't know if you know people out of town sell this, but I know for sure Memphis has. dome cap they kind of they sell it behind the counter so you have to go in and export but it's it's this dome cap i use this dome cap and they work wonderful for me and you know nine times out of ten pretty much everybody that's you know that i sell weeks to or that i done made a week for it's been a couple people saying that you know it's just too tight but back then i was i wasn't making weeks on the canvas head like i am now I was making wigs on my dome head and the cap would only fit to the dome size because it was no stretch. It was actually kind of too big for the dome. This is how I know the dome cap was too, was too small, but this right here, this canvas head is like the perfect fit. So, by me sewing four bundles in, I kind of have to sew close. I kind of have to sew a little bit close. So, let me just put this back. This, this camera at an angle so y'all will be able to see everything but I won't show the whole sewing process I show the first little bit and the last little bit to show y'all how to sew the, the wig around the closure but it's, it's really nothing to it it's like the easiest thing in the world my video that I did on snapchat helped a couple people out people inbox me like oh I actually made a wig from you know from the video and many people were asking me to just do another video you see if you sew it down right you shouldn't have a problem with it I honestly like I said I don't sew I mean I don't knot my thread every time I go through because first of all it's too much work and I used to do it but it used to get like knotted up so fast and I used to get so aggravated so I just kind of like stop and I just push it through to the end once you get to the end you want to flip it back I recommend not flipping it back single you can flip it back but single track it because if you flip it back double track at the top it's gonna feel you know it's gonna it's gonna look bulky and if you want
one of them type of people that don't like to cut your, your, you know, your hair, please single trick your weave at the top because if not, you're definitely gonna have a pokey problem. Sometimes I knot if I have room, but sometimes I don't. It still don't matter if you knot it or not. I just take this and I cut it. And I take a new piece of thread. And I kind of, I don't leave off where I left. I kind of go back a little bit and go over. Go over to make sure it's knotted. This little part right here is double threaded due to the fact that I cut it, which is okay. It's okay. See, I try not to sew on this part, I kind of try to go around it. But I still keep it kind of close. So, like I said, it's not on it, but it's like, you know. Closer the thread is, the more secure it is, you know. The wider the thread is, because I used to kind of like just, when I first started making wigs, just throwing them together, and they used to kind of like come down or basically come down kind of fast, so I had to just, you know, slow down, take my time and thread closely. The closer the thread is, the tighter, you know, the install is, the more secure it is. Just with clothes, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing with wearing clothes. You see how, like, y'all see how I'm pulling this? Make sure I don't go through the band. And I'm focusing on doubling this track because it's almost over for this bundle. I think I probably got a little bit more of this way to go. I mean, if you like it flipped and you, you know, you don't mind it being bulky, be my guest. But I need my weed to be like a sewing. I need to be as flat as possible. So I will not be doubling 
the top tricks it all because i need it all to lay flat and if you do double the, the top tricks if you just in a rush and you don't care about cutting it be my guest double the top tricks and once it's time to flip it cut it because if i just feel like i don't know i don't i don't have the big technique of doubling the little tracks and flipping it and once i flip it make it look flat you know it's cool but I just feel like it still don't nothing lay more flatter than it being cut. You already got the wig, you know, because I don't want to make the, the video too long. Okay, you guys, I'm at the top, and I have this much left. All of this right here. And you're just going to take the rest of the hair. I got a small piece. right there this should cover it all the tracks at the top is single track so this little piece right here you want to put it back right here and you're going to sew it around many spaces at the top of the wig due to the fact that I mean it is a wig and by moving your head and stuff you don't want to you know just see tracks but you know it's cool to leave spaces but try not to leave it too far at the top it really don't matter about the middle of your head because it's really not a factor as long as you don't see any tracks so
got this black right here. If you make a wig, you you should see scalp. Or something that looks more like scalp. This right here should not stay. So you gonna once you get done with the wig, you're gonna make sure everything's everything. You're gonna take the wig off of the canvas head. Take the wig off of the canvas head. You're gonna the wig, this is the wig. You're gonna go under. You're gonna go under the wig. Like this. Once you go under wig, you're gonna start with each side of the closure. You're gonna cut. Don't cut too far down because you don't want to cut it to the tray, but it should be literally a flap of the of enough room where you should cut it. bonus in the closure like I said I didn't start from scratch I kind of just really forgot that I was said I was gonna upload a video so I kind of started where I wanted where I could start not where I wanted to but where I could start but I'm gonna show y'all I'm pretty sure everybody's watching this video know how to flat iron so this should be a you know a thing but I'm gonna show y'all how to get this closure flat to your head and I don't know if I'm gonna do baby hairs or not I kind of come I'm gonna just let the person that's getting the weed kind of you know navigate their way through that if they know how but yeah this is the finished wig finished wig now I'm about to flat iron it but I'm gonna show y'all real fast before I end the video looks all rough I'm gonna show y'all cut myself real fast Cut myself on some seals of dead face. Dead face. It's crazy. Now I'm about to show y'all real quick. Real quick. I normally some people a lot of people use the one parallel. I mean a lot of people use the press and comb, but my press and comb actually went out on me because I left the house one day with it on and made a mistake and was gone all day. And it went out, so I actually have to get another one, but this does the job just fine. Just fine. So let me let this heat up, and I'm going to show y'all the oil that I use. Well, I've been using this oil for a while. I don't even know how to do it, y'all. I've been using this oil for a long while now. On weave, it works, it works better on weave than real hair. I don't know why, but it works much better. Like, you see the shine that it gives to her? It give it a much, it's light. It don't, we don't weigh the hair down at all. And it just give the weave a, a good shine, honestly. It give the weave a good, good, good shine. A clean shine, it's not heavy, it don't weigh the hair down. It makes it soft and it smells wonderful. Anybody that recommended this oil to, nine times out of 10, it works. Because weave do, does dry out of what happens to dry weave. What happened to dry anything? Dry hair, anything that's dry, of course it's gonna break off and shed because it's dry. If you wash your real hair and don't put no oil on it, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna break off because it's dry. So, this is pretty much hot. And I like the part, like, kind of closure so I can make sure each part is flat so I kind of like part through there this to flare your closure out you 
don't necessarily need a pressing comb. Pressing combs are good, works wonderful, but you don't actually, if you don't have one, as long as you got a curl iron or something, something that's, you know, hot all the way around, flat irons won't work, it should work. And believe it or not, this how flat I get my hair, I actually have to do this all the way over on my head. Cause the canvas head is kind of, I won't say it's bigger than my head, but it's just, it's a different form. So once I put the wig on my head, it always still kind of stick up. So I have to go over this same process on my head. If you think making a wig is, you know, it's easy, but it's, it's I won't say it's time consuming, but you do have to make sure you know what you're doing far as making a wig and especially on how flat you want to get it now if you just oh like i said if you just like to wear your wig any kind of way then cool but if you want your wig to look natural please don't rush it and put some time into it because a rush wig is a felt wig now i'm about to sit this back and show y'all each side on how it looks the difference and each side how flat this side is laying and how you know it's really not a big difference but it's a difference on the natural side or just put the wig on and cut the lace you know cut the wig off and just throw it on because no wigs need to be flattened on your head use oil use to put the heat up to as high as it can go and this ain't your rear hair don't worry about burning it so if it's good hair, from quite a good hair, it shouldn't burn anyway. So y'all see how flat this side of this hair is? This is what you need your wig to look like. This side right here is flatter than this side. And if you can't see that, turn it off the face. I'm just being honest. You want your wig to lay as flat as possible because wigs aren't on your head to look like a wig at all. Goodbye. Thank you.